Brian from Back to Basics here at the Homer Harvest Days just outside of Chicago, Illinois, where some awesome demonstrators are showing off their skill sets from a bygone era. Today, Arnie Banstra, a cooper, shows us how to make a bucket and a pail, the difference between the two, and how you yourself have an opportunity to train underneath him, the master himself. You start with staves, and I mark on the staves the curve that I want on the outside. Give myself a straight line, so I get pretty, pretty good straight uh, cuts on it. And then I go to my shaving horse. And the shaving horse is a clamp to hold the wood. It's a seat for me to sit on and a workbench, all in one. And with the draw knife, then I'm able to shave it down to that curve. The outside, I just use a straight draw knife, like so. And you can tell that the, the draw knife is very sharp. And so, two primary things for a woodworker is it's having sharp tools and know how to work with the grain. Well, I'm working with the grain in this direction, but I can't keep working at this end because that's where I clamp. So how do I get it? I flip this around and give myself a sharp angle to define the curve because I can't see that line when I flip it around. And then I put it on the shelf and use my chest to hold it in place so now I'm still working in the right direction with the grain. So then I get that shape outside, like so, and then flip it over, and I have a curved draw knife to shape the inside, like so. Alright, so once I have it curved inside and outside like these are, then I have to put a bevel on it. You, got, you think of the bevel, and pointing to the center. If, if all the bevels point to the center, like cutting a pizza, then they'll all come together around the circle and be watertight. So in order to get that bevel, I take it to my joiner plane, and I estimate what that angle should be, and get it started, and check it, with my high-tech bevel gauge. See the one on the top? It's pretty well shaped. And it's a 10-inch diameter, so that's a 5-inch radius. And so I just keep adjusting until I get it exactly right. I'm pretty close. Okay? So once I get enough spades made for a bucket, then it's time to raise the bucket. And that's what we do here. And put that aside. I've got two hoops the top one and the bottom, take the smaller one and a spring clamp and I clamp one stave to it so that it's held firmly and then one at a time I can put them in place and because of the, the bevel and the circle and a little sideways pressure with my thumb they stay in place as I raise the bucket. There's even a gap here, but I push the hoop down because it's tapered, then it closes it up, gives me time to get this larger hoop on, and now it's pretty stable. It's stable enough to do the hard work that I'm going to do next, drive this down tight so it doesn't come apart as I'm working on it, kind of keep these squared up as best I can, get it good and tight special Cooper's hammer. It's got a groove in here called a Nantucket driver for some reason. Now I need to cut the groove in there. And the tool to do that is this. It's got a little saw blade and the flat surface that it works off of. And this one I've been doing today. Just cut. You can see how taking that around and because of this shoulder here, it stops it when it's at full depth. Uh, and that's pretty good. 
good. Okay. So now the next thing is to get a head that fits in there tightly. And I can't, I don't have any ruler to measure that. And a more accurate way is actually to take a divider and I estimate the radius. And I start at one joint as a place to start. And then count around one, two, three, four, five, six times. And I've adjusted it by doing it several times today until it's exactly six times around. And you ask, why is that the radius, right? Not obvious, but six times around, a circle in essence defines six triangles inside that circle. The triangles are equilateral triangles. What's true of an equilateral triangle? Do you know? You know. <laughs> <laughs> All sides are equal, isn't that what you said? All sides are equal. So since I'm measuring here, that now is the radius. So now I have it exactly. So I can take it to a piece of wood. If I've got one piece, or if I, in this case, glued some together, and I take it and scratch it right into the wood. I scribe it in, and then I go to my bow saw and cut it out. And this is where my shaving board is my workbench. So I cut the circle off. You would probably go to your bandsaw, flip the switch, but a bandsaw is not variable speed like my saw. Is. cut out, the edge is too thick to fit in that groove. And in fact, sometimes I'm using a board of full thickness, so I need to thin it down. So I will take the blade and put it right to the wood and mark it with a pencil, which I've already done. You've heard it said, you know, measure twice and cut once. I say don't measure at all unless you really have to. I didn't have a chance to misread the reading here or there, and I know it's right. So then I take it back to the shaving horse and level the edge down to my pencil line until I get it to look like this, where it's a uniform edge all the way around, the right thickness to get in there, and then we put it in. I can't get it in that way, can I? So how do I do it? Flip it over, and then what? And I take that hoop off so it can spread out and snap right in place. So there you have the pail. And it's watertight. Yes, this one isn't because it's kind of beat up. But yes, this one is. But this one is a bucket, and this is a pail. What's the difference? No, not the handle. You know. <laughs> yes. This one's wide at the top, so you can get the mop in to mop the kitchen floor this afternoon. He didn't flinch. He didn't do it. And this will ride on board the Mayflower without tipping over. Gotcha. Is that the bucket? And this is the pail. You get it watertight by planing these edges very well so that they match perfectly. And when you put the head in, you see that the edges are a wedge. You can see it best with this one, where that wedge pushes in to that square groove and it wedges right into the wood and actually mashes the wood a little bit so that it's watertight. Ronnie, how'd you initially get into this? I've done woodworking for a long time. My father was a carpenter and had a complete shop. Now, Arnie, you said you, uh, you have a class, right? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, I do it in my own shop. 
I do registration through the jun local junior college, and um, it's uh, 16 hours of actual class time, and the student will come away with a completed bucket in that 16 hours. And uh, I've tried it on a full Saturday and Sunday, two days in a row, but I find too many people are just exhausted doing that. Even eight hours straight, they're tired, and then to come back a second day. So now I do it on a Thursday night, three hours, and Saturday morning, five hours, and then the next week, Thursday and Saturday, and that has worked out pretty well.